In today's video, I'm going to give you guys 20 tips, tricks, and cheats to give you an unfair advantage on defense that you probably don't even know about, starting with things you can do in the settings menu before you even start a game. But before I do, if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and let me know in the comment section, as it really helps out the channel, and I appreciate all the support. The first thing you want to do is go into your settings tab and scroll down to the gameplay helper section, and this is how your default settings will look if you've never ventured into this screen before, as all the functions aimed at helping you on defense will be turned on, but some of these feel like they hurt more than help. Auto flip can be helpful if you're a new player, but most of the defenses I run these days require me to turn auto flip off so that I can flip the play in the huddle for the purpose of a blitz or coverage. So while I usually take this off of my coaching adjustments, I can just save myself time every game and just turn it off here. But that is not all, as I find any function that takes control away from me as I am using is a bad thing. So I will also take off the defensive heat seeker assist and the defensive switch assist functions as well. If you read the description, defensive heat seeker assist is designed to steer the user defender toward the ball carrier when attempting a tackle. But what if Madden is a poorly designed game that forces you to take a bad angle as a computer often does, allowing you to just run around it? Defensive switch assist is something that tries to aid when switching players mid-play to another defender to try to get an interception, but this function will restrict your movement to prevent you from accidentally taking yourself out of the play. If you are a beginning player, you might want to keep these on, but in the long run, if you don't want Madden's faulty AI functions to get in your way, I would turn these off and learn to live without them, as I find that they hold you back more than help. In fact, the only thing that I keep on in this menu is defensive ball hawk, as this will make players move into position for interceptions automatically, often setting me up for easy interceptions before I even click onto the defender. After that, I'm going to go over some important adjustments you can do before the play starts, starting with the most important coaching adjustments you can make, whether you run zone or man coverage is most of the game. If you run a lot of zone coverage, the most important thing to do is to set your auto alignment to base. Doing this will ensure that your defense will look the same every single play, removing any tells that give away your coverage pre-snap to your opponent. But this can be a bad idea when using man coverage, as zone coverages can usually get to their coverage area easily enough without any problems. But man coverage is different, as you don't usually want to give up leverage in any direction, as this will result in the defender getting beat easily. If I switch the man coverage from this look, I can tell right away that a simple drag route from the tight end will get wide open because this man defender is too far away, or this slot receiver will get wide open in the flat because this safety is too far away at the start of the play. So while I do this sometimes just to catch my opponent by surprise, it's not a good strategy for long term success. If you use a lot of man coverages, the most important coaching adjustment is cornerback matchups, as you want to make sure that your best cornerback is matched up with your opponent's best receiver. So I will usually set this to by overall so that my highest rated cornerback is matched up with their best receiver, but there are times when this is not the best strategy, and that is usually because of speed. In Madden 24, if a receiver is 8 speed points faster than the cornerback in man coverage, he will run right past him for an almost guaranteed score every single time. And this is a pre-programmed threshold, so if you're facing a really fast receiver like Tyreek Hill is 99 speed, but the cornerback in coverage is over 8 speed points slower like James Bradbury who is only 89 speed, then your opponent can simply put Tyreek Hill on a streak and he will score a touchdown against pretty much any man coverage. So in this scenario you'll want to do a cornerback matchups by speed, but if you're facing a really tall receiver like a Mike Evans, you might want to go by height sometimes as well. My next tip is substitutions, as there are several advantages to be had here as well with personnel based on what your opponent is doing. If your opponent is a run heavy player, you can put strong defensive tackles all across your defensive line and keep linebackers into linebacker positions as well or even go as far as to put defensive ends at outside linebacker positions for higher strength and block sheds but if they're a passing player, you can put faster defensive ends at the defensive tackle spots and outside linebackers at defensive end spots for better pass rush. You can also put safeties at linebacker positions and even cornerbacks at the safety spots for better coverage on the back end as well. If your opponent likes to do both, you might not want to make these adjustments right away, but if your opponent is in a predictable situation, like you're up a touchdown late in the game or you have them on a third and long and you know that they have to pass or run, you can make these adjustments to give yourself an advantage in those situations. Next up, I'll go over the most important pre-snap adjustments, starting with run defense. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, so you always want to take that away first, meaning you will never want to give up any inside run lanes. And the easiest way to do this is to pinch the defensive line by pressing the D-pad to the left and down. And depending on what formation you are in, this will most likely close up the defensive line, taking away any inside run lanes for popular runs like the inside zone from Shotgun, making it harder to run inside as the gaps will be tighter. Doing this will make it easier to run to the outside though, so if your opponent is under center and run plays like stretch runs and tosses are available, you can spread the line and linebackers with the left and right D-pad and up on the left stick to contain the outside edge and slow down outside runs as well. 
The next most important adjustment on defense is coverage adjustments, whether in man or zone, as there is no defense in Madden that plays well enough without them, and shading is probably the most helpful out of all of them. In zone coverage, if you're getting beat underneath by drags, zigs, or flat routes, a simple shade underneath will shut those down and take them away. To do this, just press Y or triangle and down the right stick, but be aware that this will allow deeper routes open over the top of them, which is why most players opt to use a Mabel concept by putting the hard flat and curl flat on the same side of the field, and now you can see that nothing is open as the quarterback has to scramble instead. In man coverage, shading is even more helpful as you can do things like universally shading inside or out or over the top or underneath. Although I find the best ones to use are just inside and outside as shading underneath has a penalty similar to guessing run at the wrong time and can result in easy deep scores on streaks. But what if your opponent is using a simple corner route to get open outside? All you have to do at that point is universally shade outside by pressing the wire triangle button and then right on the right stick and you can see the cornerback changes positions to favor leverage to the outside, but you can also make individual coverage adjustments to your opponent's routes by pressing the Y or triangle button, then A or X, whether you're an Xbox or PlayStation, for individual coverages. And this will allow you to choose specific adjustments around a specific receiver or route. So if you only want to shade outside or inside on one specific receiver, you can do that as well, and even do things like backing off a receiver that might pose a greater risk on deep throws. Next up, I'll go over some things you could do during a play to gain advantage. When in pass coverage, if you want more interceptions, just spam the catch button when trying to make an interception, as this removes the timing penalty that EA instituted in the game that can result in drops if you press the catch button too early or too late, and it also has the added advantage of propelling you towards the ball, just like it does on offense. In fact, I spam the catch button in both offense and defense as there is no penalty in doing it and it often results in a much higher catch rate, especially when tracking a ball, as it pulls you towards the ball when it's in the air. If you're playing against a scrambling quarterback, you will need to know how to send the nearest defender by pressing in the right stick. And you can do this purposely with a quarterback spy or even a hard flat in the area, but just know that man defenders will also leave their assignments, so be careful not to overuse this at the wrong time and always be prepared to cover the area with your user that is vacated by the computer defender. And last but not least, I'm going to go over tackling, as there are several ways to gain an advantage here as well, starting with a dive tackle, as this is one of the surest ways to get an instant tackle from a far distance that will never result in a tackle battle animation. To trigger this, just press the X or square button to launch your defender and he will often ragdoll the ball carrier, bringing him down immediately. But this is not necessarily the best way to tackle, as simply running into the ball carrier will often result in a tackle by itself, but pressing the R1 and R1 button while doing so is your best chance to create a fumble, as doing this will make the defender try to punch and swipe at the ball carrier's arm. So try to spam this function repeatedly when you need to create a fumble. Just know that this often makes tacklers miss easier and it will result in an instant loss in tackle battles as well. So try to do this in gang tackle situations. If you ever get a tackle battle animation, just get into the habit of always spamming the A button when making tackles. As this is the only option that pops up, so doing it quickly will result in quick wins, whether in offense or defense. So that's that's the video. If you guys want to see some offense tip videos, I will have some that I already made popping up on screen. So just click links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.